Hi, I'm Karan Thapar. Over the last few years, I hope you've been watching my program, The Interview on the Wire. During that period, I've interviewed doctors, politicians, businessmen, scientists, authors, and even the occasional Nobel laureate. For me, it's been exciting. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. But these, as you know, are tough times. And if this program is going to remain bold, independent, and sometimes even defiant, then I think we need your support. At the end of the day, it's a truism, but editorial independence is best defended by the viewers. So if you would like this program to remain the way it is, forthright, outspoken, and interesting, then would you consider supporting us? All you have to do is to click on the description at the bottom. But more than anything else, I hope you will continue to watch the interview. Your viewership means an awful lot to me. Hello and welcome to a special interview for The Wire. With just 13 days to go for the results, two questions are at the top of everyone's mind. How is the BJP faring and what will be the final outcome? Joining me to help answer those questions is someone who's right across the length and breadth of this country regarded as our finest and foremost election expert, the well-known and highly regarded political analyst Prashant Kishore. Prashant Kishore, before I ask you how many seats in your opinion you think the BJP is going to get, let me begin by putting to you two interpretations that have come to be fairly widely believed in the last five weeks. To begin with, people say the BJP is nervous because the turnout at the first three stages of the election and perhaps in stage five as well was below last year's last time's expectations and as a result there is this belief that maybe BJP voters are not coming out <coughs> in the size and scale with which they did in 2019. How do you respond to that first interpretation? Yeah, Karan, <coughs> before we, I come to your answer, first, you know, there is this belief that with the interviews somebody can be influenced and all and that is the reason last one month people like me at least myself I can speak for myself I haven't been speaking to anybody last time I spoke was before the election started to PTI and since yesterday now that 80% elections are over more than 80% is over I I'm again talking to media so there is no intent to please or displease anyone or to influence anybody but coming back to this Quite on the contrary, we are curious to hear your views no, I because we know that you understand better than most people. But you know what happens is that you want to hear but you want to hear what actually you want to see it happening. So the moment somebody says which is contrary to what you want to see it happening, you think oh there, is must, there must be a motive. But be, it, be as it is that that is not very important. Coming back to your question, see there is no evidence to suggest that the low voting turnout or a higher voting turnout is for or against the establishment. There is simply no data which establishes such correlation. What happened is when the voting percentage went down, it could wait, it could have went down for a variety of reasons simply because it is too hot. It is not the right uh, season to have the uh, elections as it is happening. Uh, you know, a lot of people went with the belief that in this country there is no dissent left. Because you are sitting in Delhi, you are covering, you are trying to see, assess, evaluate the country's perception or mood sitting in Delhi. Very few journalists would have gone down on the, uh, uh, on the streets in the rural part of India where the real dissent, if there is a dissent, it is in the rural part more so. So, since last many months, there has been an atmosphere being created, built, sometime because of ignorance, sometime deliberately, that everyone is euphoric. Everyone wants to vote. Everyone wants to stand for the government. So what happened the moment the voting percentage came down or the moment some journalists, analysts, political activists, they went, on the, went to the field during the election, they say, oh my God, there is some dissent also. But what I call it, that it's largely a baseline effect. Baseline effect because your expectations were so high that you thought that when I will go to the field to cover, to, to assess, 
I will find everywhere only the fans of Modi. The moment you are not finding it and that coupled with the low voting turnout, then you are trying to correlate it. But that's not the case. But that was dissent, the BJP right to get nervous as a result? No, it's I wouldn't I wouldn't call they would be nervous, but if you are apprehensive, a, if you are, if you are a serious stakeholder, or I would say primary stakeholder, one of the primary stakeholders, then obviously you will look at it that why voted voting turnout is less. But again, I repeat, there is no scientific correlation, uh, there is no scientific evidence to establish the correlation between voting turnout and the possible outcome, one way or other. It could have very well the case, one could argue that because for last many months, there was this impression built that there is no fight left. So many people who otherwise would have gone and voted against BJP, they did not turn up because they thought anyway Modi is winning, so why I go and bother. Another argument in favor uh, of BJP one could say that they have a better machinery to mobilize people to bring voters, their supporters to the booth. So if voting turnout is less, it is opposition which has got their mis which, which whose machinery is relatively weak on the ground. They need to worry more. Other side of the argument, as you said, ki, oh, if Modi is so popular, why more people are not turning up? So both could be argued. So I wouldn't be drawing any conclusion or judgment only looking at voting percentage just to let me conclude by one line say second point is the voting percentage has been at not as low as people are making it out to be especially with the final data that election commission has put sadly 15 days later or 12 days later but the fact is the voting percentage is not that as low as, as low which should make us all stand up and take notice of it. Okay, you've answered the first interpretation and you clearly suggested that people who are coming to the conclusion that this is in fact a bad sign for Modi and good for the opposition are mistaken. Or the other way around. Or also. the other way around. They're reading their own wishes into the situation. But they're factoring in what they're seeing or what they want to happen. They are, it's like you have It's to wishful thinking. I wouldn't say it's a wishful thinking. It's a, like you have to do a running commentary. So you have to do, if okay. you are not finding something interesting in the match, you start commenting about the crowd. Let's then come to or the, the environment where the sun sign. Or the <laughs> Let's come to the second interpretation that has also begun to gain a lot of currency. People look at Mr. Modi's deliberate and constant demonization of the Muslim community and say this is another sign that he's clearly worried. He feels the election is slipping out of his hands, which is why he's polarizing and communalizing the atmosphere to ensure that Hindus line up behind him and vote for him. How do you respond to this interpretation? The two part of it. Those who have closely followed Mr. Modi's uh, politics and the way he campaigns, if you remove 2014 election campaign as an exception, in every election you would find a touch of this Hindu Muslim thing, whether it was 2002, 2007, 2000. Uh, uh, 11, 12 Gujarat election, that was the assembly election and 14, that was the Lok Sabha. You, if you remove those two elections uh, as an exception, in every election there has been this in 2019. But to the extent yeah, yeah, hear me out, hear me, I'm coming to it. Hear me out. In 2019, it was about Bharat, Pakistan, Pulwama. Now, what has happened that five years as a prime minister, you do not hear those rhet rhetorics. And all of a sudden, when he becomes a campaigner and he starts using those terms, sometimes it nerves, uh, it unnerves people. Even his diehard supporters, I know many of them, they have said, as a prime minister, in Koya Asi baat nahi chahiye. But to say that this is showing a definitive sign, this is a proof that he is losing, is drawing, I think, uh, taking matter too far. Can, can I interrupt? Uh, he, he, no, 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 he, hear me out. Another thing that then why he would have said it. Why what people have done, the low voting turnout in the first phase and him making this statement in Barmer. Hear me out. And that is why and people feeling or finding some dissent on the ground when they went in the fields. The first thing I've already clarified, the dissent, the disappointment ha or uh, even to some extent Dabi Hui Narajgi was always there. For last many months it has been building, maybe a couple of more than a couple of years. It's only that you have gone and discovered it now. The second part, as I've already said, the low voting turnout has got no direct correlation necessarily with one on the result outcome one way or other. 
The third, when Mr. Modi made that statement in Barmer, people clubbed all these three together. And they said, oh, now he's losing. Now, to my mind, I give an analogy. When, you are, when we are flying, even a little bit of turbulence in plane can, unner can unnerve some of the strongest, strong-willed people as well. Because you are on such a height, even a little bit turbulence can disturb you. Compared to if you are driving a car, a little bit of turbulence, you will feel un dis not so comfortable, but you are, you are okay with it. So what happened is maybe they got a little bit of shock that things are not as euphoric as we thought or as we were making it out to be. So he went back to tried and tested and then suddenly again go come back to the narrative which is more regular narrative what he uses. But has he come back to the regular narrative? Almost. Because we well, not really. After Banswara, when he first called Muslims Huspetian, and never before has an Indian Prime Minister ever called in the history of this country his own citizens infiltrators, but Mr. Modi did that. But after that, he has made a habit probably once a day, every single day of accusing Muslims of being beneficiaries of reservations that are intended uh, listen, for OBCs, SCs uh, uh, and SDs. Uh, uh, He's demonizing them in the eyes listen, of Hindus. Listen, Karal, you have followed politics of BJP and that of Modi longer than I would have seen. This Hindu-Muslim thing, the Hindutva, BJP's uh, or RSS Hindutva is literally has been one of the key weapons or strategies or tools they have always Gee, used. They can just tarah wo is bar baat kar rahe. No, apne, I, I, apne, I, I, no, apne I, I, nationals ko ghuspetiyo bula ke. He, no prime minister has ever done that in the history he, of our country. Abhi, I, you know, you, you have seen how Maut ka Saudagar statement has been weaponized. But that was yeah. about him. He is not talking about his fellow citizens. <laughs> it's one thing for Sonia Gandhi to call him Mautka Sodagar. They in a sense are equals. He is a prime minister in a secular country calling his own citizens infiltrators and repeatedly suggesting that Muslims will benefit of reservations that are meant for OBCs and STs. He's demonizing the but He has said the same thing in 2015 ele Bihar elections. You go and see my tweet. Mr. Modi has made so the same statement. In Bihar statement, Bihar assembly election. You don't think this is a sign of nervousness? You, this is a sign that he believes the election is being stolen from under his feet, which is why he's uh, become yeah, desperate. No, no, I don't see. So those people who've concluded, and a fair section of the audience listening to you will have concluded that these are signs that Mr. Modi no. is nervous. You're saying they're wrong. They're wrong. Completely. It, it, it's not signs sign of nervousness. It is he he always uses this. It's just that you are trying to add 2 plus 2. I'm saying in a losing election, also he have used it and we have evidence of him using these things uh, in many elections which they have won. So people who've taken these interpretations and believe they've understood Mr. Modi have actually come to the wrong conclusion. Absolutely. What then, as someone who's an analyst who's been watching and listening to what's been happening over the last six weeks, is the real appeal of the BJP, is it the communal touch that Mr. Modi has brought or is it instead free rations and welfareism? What is the real No, reason? it's a combination. It's not only one or other. I have said this in many interviews probably to you uh, as well in the past. It is Hindutva, nationalism, welfareism and then the electoral uh, and financial muscle they have built over a period of time put together these four are a very formidable combination to have as far as uh, any political party is the is communal concerned. appeal adding to the Modi see these are like steroids you do it to maybe charge your own uh, diehard supporters these these statements will not give you incremental vote what it probably does is it just energizes, creates a bit more. Uh, this uh, is very interesting. In earlier interviews, you've said the Ram Mandir will not bring an incremental vote. Absolutely. Now you're saying the communal appeal, the demonizing of Muslims also won't bring an incremental vote. No, not at all. And it is not said with the idea of getting incremental it's vote. It's only said to charge up his own supporters. Yes, yes, yes. Because he felt that they were flagging. They were not flagging, they were complacent maybe. They thought that 400 par, Jithi Modi ji, 
मैं अगर घर पे भी बैठा रहूंगा तो क्या होगा मेरा अगर सी वॉट ही डज यू आर सपोज यू आर वेरी अपसेट विथ योर लोकल पार्लियामेंट योर एम पी मेंबर पार्लियामेंट एंड यू से ओके मोदी जी इज फाइन बट आई एम गोइंग टू पनिश दिस गाई दिस टाइम आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू वोट फॉर हिम आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू वर्क फॉर हिम एंड समी से बट हाउ कैन यू लेट बीजेपी लूज ऐसे बट एनी वे बीजेपी इज विनिंग फोर हंड्रेड सो इफ दिस वन गाई लूज इट डजेंट मैटर बट इफ दिस स्टार्ट हैपनिंग ऑल ओवर इंडिया देन दे माइट लूज मेनी सीट्स एंड दैट्स वाई वेन ही इज मेकिंग दोज स्टेटमेंट मेक नो मिस्टेक दे आर वेरी एक्सपीरियंस स्मार्ट पॉलिटिशियन ही इज नॉट सेइंग आउट ऑफ नर्वसनेस इट्स अ वेल कैलकुलेटेड स्टेटमेंट to charge your own carder telling them that come out and vote because this is what you okay you I, you are <laughs> i i i hear what you're saying and in a sense you have if i can use the word debunked the interpretations that many people in the audience may have had let me put to you something that you said to rtv in an interview about a few days ago you said brand modi had sharply declined compared to 2014 compared also to 2019 and in fact you said there were many parts of the country where modi faces what you call the disappointment of the people but you added but you added he was saved by the fact that a there is weakness in the opposition and secondly people don't know who else to vote for but, but if that's what saving him it's not huge support that he has behind him it's default almost But see, the support is always relative. Relative to any other leader in this country, in India today, he has more support than anybody else that's out there. So when I'm saying Brand Modi has taken a hit, I'm comparing Brand Modi in 2014, 2019 versus to, uh, versus today. So in 2014, when people voted for him, to the my, best of my understanding, the Brand Modi was symbol of hope to a large section of those who voted for him. In 2019, when voter voted for him, uh, to large section who voted, he was a brand. He was a symbol of trust. Today, those who are voting, a significant chunk of those who are voting, he, they are voting for him because they are finding there is no better alternative. So it's a default vote. To some extent, yes. To large extent, I would say, because you go and just chat on the uh, on the streets, people who are voting. and they are complaining that i don't have job i there is too much mahangai i am prob i am facing this problem that problem and then you say but who are going to vote and say i will vote for bjp only and then people ask that if you just now you are telling that you are having so much problem then why are you going to vote for B- bjp and they said but koi hai kaun the statement dusra hai kaun shows the lack of effort on the part of opposition in last many years so then let me ask you this you are observe not just politicians you also observe people and voters how do voters today view narendra modi compared to how they viewed him in 2019 and 2014 well vote, what's the change well i'm uh, voters are in different categories so you know you cannot make one is of course his supporters still believe but to my mind even his die hard supporters uh would n- Would, re- would realize or would accept that you know there has been a decline in the euphoric support or a blind support which he had and for this i always quote data let's not go about what i feel or you feel or some anecdotes here or there if you look at the data uh, 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 of mr modi and his own brand his appeal just this elections you take google analytics and compare mr modi's own uh, uh popularity between say february to june in 2019 versus february to june in 2024 and analytics will show because this is not biased it's like it's taking care of all the people who are using internet and what does it show and it shows that it is it, it has come down significantly take another measure number of people average number of people who are coming to his rallies there is a steep decline in the average number of people who would used to come in 2014 2019 versus now you look at the third measure the trps the television which used to cut live all his speeches many people in 2014 used to say that these are because they have been paid or bought but i can tell you first hand because i was running that campaign it television channels did not cut necessarily because they were paid they cut for trps they cut because they were getting the trp that's not happening now that's that's not happening as much as it used to happen earlier 
if if now people are cutting it's more out of fear or being you know kind of forced to cut the another very evident thing your office can look at it all the interviews mr modi has given this season just look at the views on the youtube of different channels because if you talk about rahul gandhi channel versus narendra modi channel one can argue whether it is fair or not fair whether it is all channels put together on an average his views count or of his interviews are less than 1 million compare this all together less no, than 1 no, million for each i'm saying okay. on an average there are very few interviews that has gone 2 million or above compare this to his interviews to the similar uh, set of channels or uh, journalist in 2019 on an average every interview was watched by more than 5 million or above i give you one, one so it's 20% no again let's not draw or jump to i'm just giving the facts uh, let's take for one of the most talked uh, uh, interactions i wouldn't call it uh, interview with akshay kumar just go and see it the view would be something close to 75 million now i don't think this season any of his interactions or interviews has even got 5 million view so all these things even if you are a modi sympathizer his supporter you must take note it's a brand because i'm not comparing modi with rahul gandhi or uh, xyz i'm comparing modi in 2019 modi in 2014 versus modi in 2024 and all this data analytics anecdotal evidence is suggesting that his personal appeal and brand has come down has taken a hit now okay actually it even more than hit has come down no, very sharply but, but now i have no measure to quantify it, but what i'm like down to 20% to say, 5 million to 1 million so what I, no no don't 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 <laughs> make it that simple but what i'm saying is there is a decline perceptible decline still if he is ahead the same analytics tells you that when you compare him with say his challenger rahul gandhi he is still 3 times 4 times 5 times bigger than what rahul gandhi is so yes his own personal appeal the intensity of support i underline the word his support in number in terms of numbers of percentages might have not gone down as much as that was needed for him to lose election but certainly the intensity of support has gone down aren't you now giving me reasons why in fact he is perhaps worried and why in fact he is a little concerned because your own analysis of le, google uh, analytics le, le, your own analysis listen, of the way uh, his interviews are le, being watched le, 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 suggests that people's interest in modi has come down very sharply as a result of which if the turnout numbers begin to go down whether they go down by 3% as they did in the first round or 2% almost as they did in the fifth right that will begin to worry him because he'll say combined I, I, with what uh, you're uh, talking about and the viewership that have gone down and the analytics are going south this turn out also <laughs> reflects a loss of a lack uh, of loss of interest th- this is again karan one should be very careful in when you are extrapolating any information i'm one, extrapolating from what you said no you, it's your extrapolation not but, mine but based on what you I said i am giving so that's you 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 run the risk of uh, defending that extrapolation i run the risk of taking I, you as a guru I, i am telling you the facts i am giving you the numbers now put together the impact of it how much it is that's something which i don't know and i don't want to comment about things which i don't know you are adding this i have said that voter turnout low or high has got no correlation with outcome but now you are linking that with what i am saying on the uh, other what i am linking is the fact that you given me reasons why I, mr modi I, should be nervous yeah, and i'm linking it with the earlier see, reason why he was nervous i, I have so said something connect. when you are that big you are flying that high you tend to be nervous nonetheless every time because you are at that position as is, as is told what you happened are. to singapore airlines yesterday suggests that when turbulence happens at high altitudes it can be lethal no lives were lost on that no plane. but i'm saying that even a routine turbulence in aeroplane bothers people more than the turbulence in the car so a leader like mr modi who is at the position where he is and whatever little i know of him he is not the person who would not be worried he would be always worried now wh- being worried is like you are a good student you are worried about your exam that's not necessarily a wrong thing so don't again i'm saying do not extrapolate things to suit what you want me to say i am saying if say i am a student i'm very worried about my exam that makes me prepare better 
and I get, therefore, I get a better result versus somebody who is an idiot who yes, is not yes, preparing yes, yes, for yes, the yes, exam. But let me, now, now you must, no, 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 now you have to complete, complete, let me complete, let me complete. I am a student, I don't care about my studies, I don't care about my result and therefore I would appear very careful. Yes, care, but now let me interrupt and point out, let, me take, in let me take your own analogy and put it back to you. Good students are nervous and when they are nervous they prepare better. How is Mr. Modi preparing better? By demonizing Muslims in his country. No, but that's, that's his just, choice. That's, that's his choice. No, no, no. But what that but, but he, but he, no, hang on a second. of course it's his choice, no one can dispute that, but what it suggests is that the way he's chosen to prepare better suggests that he's worried that otherwise Hindus may not vote for him and he's deliberately putting fear into them. Muslims will take away your reservations, support me and I will guarantee they never go. He keeps saying it. While I live, reservations will never go. That is only said if you want to frighten Hindus into supporting you and that reflects the extent to which he's worried in, and nervous. In, in, in democracy, you are entitled to say what you want to say in a manner in which you want to say when Rahul Gandhi says something, obviously he believes in what he is saying. Some people will like it, some people will not like it. So Mr. Modi or his party or his leaders are free to say. Now one can judge whether he sh you should use the word or not. That is a different debate. But I am saying use of a particular phrase or a or 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 a typology uh, or a typology doesn't necessarily mean that he is losing or winning the election. Let me put this to you. If the analytics suggest that concern and criticism of Mr. Modi is growing, if the viewership... It's not growing only yesterday. It has been growing last Absolutely. many years. Absolutely. And if that is suggested by the analytics, as you pointed out, and if the viewership of his interviews is down, possibly as low as 20% of what it used to be, is he still a highly regarded man as he used to be or has that also diminished? But again, I am trying to tell you that you have to also look at the baseline. It's l a lot to do with the baseline effect. Suppose he has got 10 times lead over Rahul Gandhi. But I am not talking about Rahul Gandhi. Yeah, I am not comparing I, him to Rahul. I am comparing Modi to Modi. So, yes. So, Modi to Modi, I said that his brand appeal is blind support, the intensity of support has gone down. That's and it. therefore, he is not as highly regarded as he used to be. No, that's your words. So what are your he words? could still be highly regarded by many people. No, but so suppose I, I. But as highly regarded as he used to be. No. Won't that get reflected no. in the fact that his viewership could be down to twenty no. percent, as you pointed out? No, viewership okay. is not the only thing that gives the, the full picture. Even viewership blind, is one of even, even blind support, you said, has gone down. I said. The intensity of his support base would have gone down. And you also said that the blind support he used to have in 2019 yes. is now a lot lower than it was. Yes, it, it is lower wouldn't than Wouldn't that what suggest that he is not as highly regarded as he used to be? No, now this is your interpretation. Okay. Against that background, let me then ask you how many seats do you expect the BJP to win when the results are announced on June the 4th? First, the disclaimer, a standard disclaimer, nobody knows who is going to win how many seats. Let's take but that as for granted. Because I am not polling, I am not an exit, uh, I am not, I'm, I'm not uh, a, a pollster, I am not, I'm not a se trained cephologist. But with whatever observation or experience I have in this domain, I have already said, I have been on record last three months, more than that, that I do not see BJP's number going down materially from where it was in 2019. So, you are expecting 303 again? I told you that nobody can give you the number, but more or less the number which they had in 2019, I see the repeat of that or maybe it will get even better. Could I therefore say you are talking about a figure like 300 plus minus 10? No, I do not want to, I say by and large they are coming back with the same or slightly better majority. So, that is 300 plus, plus possibly 10? 10. 10, 20, I do not know. But I no, say, but not minus ten twenty, plus ten twenty, not minus. Yes, more, more. I said this that most likely it's above that, not less. But it's not three fifty, three seventy. But definitely it is same or slightly better than. Two what things is. follow from what you're saying. As you said a moment ago, it's definitely not three fifty or three seventy. I've said this four five months back. Absolutely, it was, it's not going to come three fifty, three seventy. It was just the. The range thing. is three hundred plus ten plus twenty. No, again. I am saying they are coming back. I do not want to give the number. No, number. no, I am saying, the, saying range, they are coming, the range. It, the range. Uh, I, no, I, I do not give the range because I do not want to cap the other side. I just give you the base. More or less they are coming back with the similar numbers. 
maybe with slightly better than what they had and slightly better it is for it is for you to put the range uh, converting this slightly better is meaning what it could be 5 15 20 i'm saying slightly better than what they have and that's what matters two things follow from what you're saying one we've already agreed on it's not 370 it's not 350 the other thing that follows is it is a comfortable majority yes more than comfortable more than comfortable majority yeah because to uh, constitutionally any party or any party any form political formation needs 272 absolutely and he could be something like 30 40 50 above it possible yeah if they're coming they are coming back 300 plus so that is 30 above uh, already and then if it's a bit above 300 that's another 10 another 15 possible so we're talking about 40 45 50 above possible where do or you, rather likely or rather likely yes where do you see the nda coming in this is another futile exercise we all get into where nda comes you and i know in last 10 years whoever wins there is likelihood that many who are winning on the other side will, will become the part of NDA. So I don't spend one minute thinking or calculating or estimating what the NDA number I would look like. I take a point completely, but it also because means it's a futile exercise. But, but I take a point, but it also means because in it in could this go to Charles Sopar because others have joined so it. So as you, have, to as you have heard Prime Minister himself saying that anyway we were four hundred. Because if you look at NDA and those who were not part of NDA but supporting us, we were 400. So that's why I'm trying to tell you the in this era, there is no point in talking about NDA. What matters is the number BJP gets. If they get 300 plus, then in all likelihood, many winning parties, many I say, at certain point of time would con would go and help like YSRCP last time won 21 MP seats. They were not part of NDA, but five years they were more NDA than the NDA partners. Do you have any sense of where Congress could end up? Could Congress come close to three no. figures? When you say no, which no are you saying? No, they can't come close to three figures or no, you no. don't have a sense? They, they, they cannot get three figures. They cannot get three figures. They wouldn't get three figures. How much? Take it as a headline. How much? How much better than 51, 52? I have no idea. Now, you know, they are 50, 55. Where they will be, I don't know. But I do not see Congress getting 100. Because if Congress is getting 100, then BJP is not getting 300. As simple as this. So, I can't be saying, it, it's, it's a common sense. Congress cannot get three figure, period. Where do you think Congress can go to? I don't know. At all? Th there is no bottom to the pit. Ah. Uh -huh. You mean it could fall below 51? I have no idea about it. I'm just saying Congress is not getting into three figures. Let's leave it there. Now, whether they get, because I do not get into these numbers for heck of it. I'm not doing it for BJP or Congress that how many seats you are going to get. I'm broadly looking what, who is going to form the government. Now, whether Congress comes at 65, 68, 72 or 55, it is immaterial to me. It, to my mind, it doesn't matter. If somebody says, oh, I have improved by 20, okay, be my guest. Who cares whether you improve from 55 to 65 or 68? Why should I break my head? I would break my head if I see that they are, uh, there is a possibility of them breaking into 100. That would change the... But that's out. That, to my mind, it's out of question. Let's then come back to the BJP and try and see if we can get a sense of how the BJP is doing regionally. Let's start with South India. In 2019, they won 29 out of 130 seats if you add Pondicherry to the list. How much better or how much worse will they do in 2024? Karan, I, for, just to make my life simple, I have kept, uh, I divide India in two parts, mm -hmm. going by the political contours which we have for last in last 10 years. They then West and North where BJP has drawn bulk of their support and the seat from. And there's the set of a state that I call East and South, uh, where I just don't include Karnataka, but I start from Bihar, I add Bengal, Assam, Orissa, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Th Tamil Nadu and Kerala. And I have done this bifurcation, keeping the political history of last 10 years. If you look at BJP's 303, the bulk of it, almost 250 plus seats have come from the north and west, including Karnataka, which is, <laughs> somebody can object that no, they are not, uh, uh, Karnataka is not uh, north, it is south, this, that, but 
that is one set of states. I do not see BJP's number taking a material hit. I underline the word material hit. Material hit for me is 50 plus seat. I do not see BJP losing more than 50 seat in what they uh, uh, invest in uh, north. On the second, on the other side in east and south starting Bihar going up to Kerala, I see BJP's seat as well as the votes here both going up and hence the conclusion that they are more likely to come back with a similar or slightly better majority than what they had in 2019. And inherent in your answer, if I understood you correctly, is what they lose or could lose in North and West, they will gain in East and South. Uh, almost they will gain. So, I, I do not want to get into debate of how many seats they are going to win in Maharashtra or Karnataka and Haryana and Rajasthan because it is a futile exercise. But broadly 250 seats came from this region. I do not see that number going below 200. The but you actually do see the possibility of 50 seats being lost in the north and west? No, I am saying I do not see material damage. I, if I would have taken it seriously, if I would have calculated, if my numbers would have showed that they are losing 50 or more seats in west and north. If they lose say 5 seats in Rajasthan, 2 seats in uh, 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 Haryana or 3 seats in Haryana, it is, poss is it possible? Yes, it is possible. But will it have impact on BJP's number, final outcome? Okay, no. I, I give you okay. an example, you will understand. A lot of people do not realize between 2014 and 19, BJP lost 25 seats in UP and Bihar. Probably you do not even pay attention to it. In UP and Bihar, despite them sweeping entire northern India, Hindi heartland, between 2014 and 19, BJP lost 25 seats in UP Bihar alone. But still the number came above to it what they had in they gained elsewhere. because they gained in states like Bengal. This time I see them gaining adding number in Bengal, I see them adding number in Assam, they are adding number in Odisha, they are adding number in Telangana, they are adding number in Andhra Pradesh, possibly one or two in Kerala and Tamil Nadu as well. But again put together in this set of states where 225 Lok Sabha seats are and BJP's current tally is less than 50. I see that number going up. So, if even if there is some damage on the other side, they have compensated. Covered. Another point I will say, a lot of people who are talking about massive dent in BJP's number in North and West and three states are crucial there. People who are talking about massive dent, they are talking about uh, UP, they are, you have to factor in Maharashtra and Karnataka. Because as we have already discounted that if even if they lose say 5 seats in, uh, in Rajasthan or 4 in um, uh, Haryana, it would not have a material impact on the final outcome. So, let us the, take these 3 states one by one. First start with Maharashtra, a lot of chatter that there is a dissent, there is a dissent, there is a BJP is in trouble in, has been in trouble of late in Maharashtra and you have seen in last one year the political developments in Maharashtra, they have broken every party, they have tried to. Uh, you know, Prime Minister probably has made maximum visits in Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra and all. But the most optimistic numbers for opposition coming from Maharashtra is 25, 20 to 25. I, you and I, for argument's sake, agree on the higher number, 25 seat to opposition in Maharashtra. Just take it down. Maharashtra has got 48 seat. In the outgoing parla parliament, BJP slash NDA because Shiv Sena has already on the other side, they had 23 MPs. So, even if I take the most optimistic number coming from the opposition ranks that Maharashtra opposition is going to win 25 seats, which I do not believe, but take it even, even if I take the 25, still BJP number of 23 is not going down. So, where is the damage to them or their number of 303? Hold me, hold, hold on. Hmm. Then somebody will say, in UP they are losing seats. Just for your viewers to refresh their memory, last time opposition was far more formidable because they had a Sapa Baspa alliance and BJP's tally came down from 73 to 62. They lost in UP almost 11 seat vis-a-vis -vis 2014. So, BJP tally in, in their own tally, not of the allies, in UP is 62. That means they lost 18 seats with allies, probably they won two more. So, if BJP were to lose 
more than 20 seats, then only the number will start coming down. I am not meeting like somebody like Yogendra Ji, who is who I greatly respect as a cephologist, he is a great analyst, super mind when it comes to understanding some of these things. Even he is not saying that BJP's number in UP is going to 40. If you are saying that opposition might win 20-25 seat, the worst case scenario would be 3-4-5 seat damage to BJP because they have already 18 seat in the opposition kitty. So, you tell me which credible analyst on the opposition side has said that BJ, uh, they are winning, opposition is winning 50 seats in UP. Unless you are winning 40 or plus, there will be no material damage to the final outcome. This is the point I am trying to highlight. Absolutely. But the interesting thing is definitional. And I am not quarreling with you, I am just pointing it out. You said there won't be material damage, but you defined material damage yourself as losing more than 50 seats. Most people would say, if Modi actually loses 50 out of the 250 odd that he has in North and West India, that is already material damage. Yes. You are defining material damage as more uh, than that. Yes. So, suppose for argument's sake, because you love to pick the word. I am not picking. I am just, okay. I'm just true, so finding your words let's, interesting. Let's, let's pick this 50. Let's make 50 minus in West and South and add 30 from this side. It's still 300 almost. Well, it's 20 down. No, it's, it's still If there. it's 50 down here and only 30 there, you're 20 down. But again, you are quarreling with, you're just trying to get I, I'm a not number. Quarreling. I'm, not quarreling. I'm just saying, pointing out that your, and that's your a, definition of material damage is very interesting yes, as, because it's more as, than as 50 seats he has as, to as, as a political observer, as I told you, I'm not a cephologist. I'm not under pressure to necessarily count the number. I, I, mean, I look at the broad picture and the broad picture is telling me that the damage, if any, I underline the word, if, if any, in West and North is not enough, especially in the view of the in, uh, increment in number which we see in West, is East and South to make a ma cha change in the final. Outcome. I understand what you're saying, but I'll come back again and point this out. A lot of people hearing you will say to themselves, if material damage in the West and the North only happens if he loses more than 50 seats, Prashant Kishore is prepared to accept that there could be a loss could be a loss of up to 50 seats for Mr. Modi in the North and the West, which he believes will be compensated. And I'm saying two things in response. One, if there is a loss of up to 50 seats in the North and West, that would be considered huge. You may not call it material damage. Others would consider it huge. And really, can he make up for losing 50 but seats again, in the you, East and the South? Can he really yes, make up for yes, losing 50 can. seats? Yes, he can. This is again, and this is what happens when you read uh, or interpret the statement taking only one part. I gave you an example that in UP and Bihar alone in two, two states, 20. 25 seats BJP lost between 2014 to 2019. In UP they came by 11, came down by 11 and in Bihar they came down from 32 to 17. Are we talking about it? Because Bengal completely evaporated it. Can I, can I, can I put one thing else to you? It's not just that Mr. Modi will have to compensate for possibly up to, and I'm saying possibly up to 50 seats lost in North and West by winning the same number in East and South. But in the South, he may not win again the 25 out of 28 that he won in Karnataka in 219 because now he's again, no longer yeah, in power I, I've in already the made a disclaimer, Karnataka I have added in the 250 which they have won. So, Karnataka don't bring it here. Oh, so, Karnataka is part of the North? North, again, not definitionally, the politically, yes, we have counted the 250 odd seats they have got in 2019. Karnataka is part of that kitty. But then he has to compensate, by the way, for the 50 seats that he loses in the north in states like Bengal, Orissa, Telangana, Andhra, Tamil Nadu, Kerala. Do you really Assam, believe? Yes, he Assam, can. yes. I really believe he can get an additional 50 in these? Almost, yes, they can. Okay, you're really sticking your neck out by saying it because a lot of people I have you will say, I have agar us taraf 50 haar rahe hain to yahan to 50 aur jeetenge nahi. Aap pata hai kya kar rahe ho? Jab range dete hain na ek party ka ki 180 se 230 jeetenge to you are taking a higher number on the, the 230 on one side or rather estimate the lower. Main aapko fir se repeat kar de raha hu so that there is no confusion. To my mind, BJP in North and West there is no material damage to them and material damage to my mind is more than 50 seat. And in East and South, they are gaining vote share and seat adequate enough to compensate if 
there is any damage in north and west and that damage in north and west could be up to 50 meaning because you are sticking to 50 50 what is material so it could be I'm not sticking it's your say, definition so I'm saying it could be 32 25 15 I don't know but I as a see if I want to make an observation if they would have been losing more than 50 in north and west then I would have taken it seriously if they are not losing I would not take it seriously let me put this to you how confident are you of this as confident as I could be what I, I have ever been I, I tell you why I, I, I listen, Karan. I'm not in the business no, of no, predicting I, I'll elections. No, no, I'll tell you why I asked that life. question. I'll tell you why I asked that question. How confident are you? Because in May 2022, you predicted that Congress would be routed in Himachal. It won. In September did 2023, I? yes, did you, I? you're on record. Wait, where? You're on record. We've got it. Uh, no, but this is your, your, last time also, you are you're always trying to create a hypothesis and trying to put it on the guest it's side. No, I'm not creating if a I hypothesis. It show me like show me a video, Karan. Now, it's because you have said it something, yes, you, absolutely. Not, you are not dealing with some spokesperson or party. If you show me a video of me telling that Congress will be routed in Himachal, a video. In May 2022. Hear me out. If you show me, I will quit the job or you apologize publicly on the camera. I have show me the video where I have said that Congress will be routed in Himachal uh, does it have to be? on video. Just a second. Does it have to Hear be video? Don't, no, don't no, try to pin I'm down not, I'm not, Hang on a no, second. I, I'm no, not no, letting no, you go, no, go out of this. No, no. no I'm not letting you go, go I, out I, of you this. You don't have to let me get out of it. No, I no. You, see, when, can I finish? When, no, can no, I you finish? cannot. You no, cannot. No, hang on a second. When, you are, when you are interviewing a person and you proud, you take great pride in being factual. I am being factual. Stick to the fact. You haven't even let me finish. Show me the video. Release it on the wire. Where Prashant Kishor has said, that Congress Does it will... have to be a video? Yes. Why can't it be something to say to a newspaper? I, I don't know. A newspaper can write anything. You can write anything. Show me where I've said this. I, Show me where there I've There are said loads this. of things that are written by newspapers. I don't count. And it has been a No, newspaper. you can't. I, I go from here and what you write in your news publication is none of my business. What I say, show me that words. If I have said that Congress will be routed in Himachal in 2022, I am saying on camera, on record, that I quit what I do. But if you are wrong and trying to put your perception in my uh, as my statement, then please Let be man enough to say I sorry am, about it. Forgive me. I am always man no, enough to no, tell. No, Let me finish don't, now. Don't do Let me finish without don't, your raising your voice. No, no, Let don't me do this. finish don't without do this, your interrupting Karan. me. You are Let not going to you are not going to intimidate me. Interrupting me. You are I am not always going to man me. enough to accept my mistake. You, you have I made a mistake frequently. You have however, made a mistake. however, I am you have made a mistake. I am quoting what has you, been you have made a mistake and what has been you have made a mistake. I have not made a mistake. You have made a mistake what has been just, in newspapers just, and on websites and I'll repeat just, what you said. Revive. But in May 2022, you are quoted as having said Congress will okay. be routed in Himachal. In saying. September 2023, Keep. you are quoted as having said BRS would win Telangana and it did not. Those are the reasons why I said how confident are you this time round? Because according to newspapers, I don't according to, to you. websites, I... you were wrong on that occasion. Okay. You can raise your voice, so can I. Oh, you it please doesn't raise. serve any purpose Please anymore. raise. Please I'm raise. not raising it. Please raise. And I let me add on. Please I raise. Have never, I am never Please embarrassed raise. in accepting a mistake. Do Mistakes not. Are do not try to happen. intimidate me. But I have not in this do instance not made a mistake. Try to intimidate I'm me. not trying to you intimidate you. You will not be able to you. intimidate me. You are trying me. to intimidate me. You will. N nobody. No journalist. Nobody can intimidate me. I stand by what I say. I am and not you have trying back to intimidate on camera. you. You are the you, one who you raised said, your voice. You said. You said. You. You said that. I have said this. Show me the video. Okay. It's Show me the video or apologize. It's interesting no. that you reacted the way you did. That itself will be of interest to the audience. I'll just point that out. Oh, please. You and don't try to be a clever journalist. I'm not being a clever don't, journalist. Don't you don't can try I, can, to don't can, try can I to continue be, or do you wish no, to stop? No, no. Why should I stop? Then, then can let me continue. Don't, I don't want to give you that privilege that uh, I said something and he ran out of my interview. I can deal with you and four like you. I I congratulate yes, you. Please now go let ahead. me continue with the next question. If Mr. Mo if you do not believe by what I'm saying, if you have don't no, no faith, why are you interviewing no, me? I go ahead and interview no, those who you want to interview. It's not that I don't believe what you're saying. The question how was confident how confident are you? are you? Confidence doesn't mean lack of belief. Okay, Confidence means are you sure? Go ahead, or is this just go a ahead with your 80 next or 90% certainty? Go ahead with next questions. I will happily go ahead please with the next go question. Ahead. 
I thank Please you. Please go ahead. I will, and I thank you for letting me go ahead, and I thank you for not getting upset enough to walk out. Please go ahead. But you, you have your own experience with walking out. People do not walk out. They are not fearful of you or your questioning or your line of questioning or your style of questioning. Do not live in in this perception that you are Mr. so uh, aggressive Mr. and authentic Mr. that people will Mr. run out, Mr. run away Mr. from Mr. you. Mr. Please Mr. Go, Mr. Ahead. go ahead. Why are you personalizing it? Go ahead. Why are you personalizing it? Go ahead. It? I will definitely go ahead. But Please. why are you personalizing it? Because you you said, will you continue or walk away? That means you have experience of people walking away I from your say, interview very I often. I didn't say, will you walk away? You I said, said that. No, I said, will you continue or do you want to end the interview? No. Not walk again, away. You are, you want again, you are playing with words. I'm not playing with Just words. Go and re rewind. I'm not playing with words. I, I hope you will play the same interview. The, in the same entire words. interview yes. as recorded word for please. word without a second being left out will be shown. That is a guarantee. Okay, please. Go now, ahead. Earlier in this interview, on two or three occasions, you said, that Mr. Modi no longer has the euphoric support he had in 2020, 2019. He no longer has the blind support he had. I if didn't say that. The problem with you is you ask a question, you hear the answer of the interviewee, and then you reword it the way you want to re re reword it. Your and words I were he doesn't have the euphoric support. I said support what I had to say on that. I do not but want I to let me just If ask you want to ask the question again, ask, I will but answer. I, I'm asking a question. No, I don't said. repeat my, what I said. I'm repeating. Just, just ask the question. Does, don't repeat what I said. Does it mean that if he doesn't have the euphoric support and the blind support he had in 2019 and yet has a substantial majority this time round of 30 or 30 plus, that he could be a weaker prime minister than he's been? Possible. Possibly. Possible. Would he be capable of taking the big decisions that he's talked about? He has, so long he has support in the parliament, he could. So he could still push through things like a uniform civil code. I, I, he could still push doubt. through delimitation of Lok Sabha constituencies, which is due in 2026. Because delimitation of Lok Sabha anyway is a constitution. So the loss thing. of blind support won't matter to the sort of prime minister he is? Not in immediate term. Not in the near term. In what sort of term could it matter? Uh, in longer term, in two years, three years, you could have people or segment of population who might not agree with what he legislate or what he brings as a new decisions. People can dissent and people can go and dissent. And they have done that even in his previous regime. The farmers protested against his decision. He had the majority, still farmers protested. So the section of society could get angry with him, could not like what he is doing. You have seen it in Indira Gandhi's case. In 1971, she had a brute majority. By seven, 1973, people were literally baying for her blood on the street. It's a part of the democracy. One last question. If he wins a comfortable third term with a sizable majority, 30, 40 seats, where does that leave the opposition? That's for the opposition to decide. But as an analyst? No, that's for the opposition to decide. Country has enough opposition, don't worry. Country, country's opposition or the dissenting voices are not function of what Karan Thapar does, what Prashant Kishore does or what Rahul Gandhi does. There are more than 600 million people whose living conditions, whose economic well-being may or may not be as they would like it to be and they would be always be the dissenting voice. They are more likely to be dissenters vis-a-vis -vis any government or the um, system and hence, th there will always be dissent, there will always be opposition. Whether opposition parties or leaders or formation are able to take them with them, they are able to galvanize them, convert them as their supporter, voter, that's a different thing. But opposition in this country is never, has never been weak, will never be weak. Prashant Kusor, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Karan. Great meeting you. Hi, I'm Karan Thapar. Over the last few years, I hope you've been watching my program, The Interview on The Wire. During that period, I've interviewed doctors, politicians, businessmen, scientists, authors, and even the occasional Nobel laureate. For me, it's been exciting. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. But these, as you know, are tough times. And if this program is going to remain bold, independent, and sometimes even defiant, then I think we need your support. At the end of the day, it's a truism but editorial independence is best defended by the viewers. So if you would like this program to remain the way it is, forthright, outspoken and interesting, then would you consider supporting us? 
all you have to do is to click on the description at the bottom. But more than anything else, I hope you will continue to watch the interview. Your viewership means an awful lot to me.